Man, I found my red shirt, but I used to have a gray hoodie. I, I can't find it, don't know where it is. So I was gonna have the red shirt, gray hoodie, blazer. I was gonna have some pretty solid Loki cosplay, but I can't find the hoodie, so what's the point? That kind of burns. Anyhow, dogma. So Dogma is one of the Kevin Smith movies from the View Askew cinematic universe. Came out in 1999, which is actually, the View Askew universe is really my earliest memory of a cinematic universe. Saw Jay and Silent Bob strike back first, and then people were like, dude, you haven't seen the other, oh my God. So we all just rabbit hold it. Back in the day, and by and large, I, I really loved the movie. So Dogma is the story of a woman named Bethany, played by Linda Fiorentino. She has a crisis of faith, but the voice of God, played by Alan Rickman, comes to her and is like, you need to go to New Jersey and stop two angels, Loki and Bartleby, played by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You have to stop them from basically going into this church and unmaking existence. So she sets off with a fellowship, a fellowship of two prophets played by Jay and Silent Bob, the 13th apostle played by Chris Rock. So basically it's Fellowship of the Ring with stoners or Fellowship of the Ring with stoners again. The finest weed in the South Valley. Apologies, I know I've had Good time if you're drunk as a writing for 10 years, no one cares. Have the boring mind altering drug alcohol as part of your writing, no one's gonna care. You reference weed as part of your writing, a couple of people in the comment section lose their minds. But I wanted to revisit Dogma after watching the Jay and Silent Bob reboot because I was like, is it nostalgia goggles? Did Kevin Smith really have it back in the day or is it just like a thing that's a thing I could enjoy back when and I, I've grown past it or gotten old and boring, <laughs> who knows what happened. Point is I watched Dogma and it's still great. I don't know what to say. I watched it today. Also, I watched it not under the influence of anything because th that's proper science. You gotta be fair. If I watch Jay and Silent Bob reboot sober, I gotta watch this sober. That's just consistency. First of all, everyone brings it in this movie. I love the characters and the actors, how they portrayed them. Whether it's the lead, Linda Fiorentino, she was great in the movie as someone who's vulnerable with a crisis of faith. She doesn't know if she's the one to be doing this thing. But also, she doesn't take any shit from Jay because the entire time Jay is being Jay about it, which I'll get to him in a second as to why he's perfect in the dynamic he plays in here. But I thought it was a well done story of discovery and growth with her. She's great in this movie. She actually has one good meltdown scene where you're like, I get where you're coming from. Also Alan Rickman as the Metatron, the voice of God. I don't know if it's the fact that Alan Rickman is the one playing this role. Just Alan Rickman in this role, along with Chris Rock, Jay and Silent Bob. Just There's this element of irreverence in these biblical characters that otherwise in other forms of media would be like, um, we are perfect. We are apostles after all. My Lord be it his name, we have to do this quest and this mission for the sake of humanity because we are perfection. And it's like, if I think about the story of the apostles, I would like to think of them as more flawed as I remember them being in the Bible. Flawed apostles hanging out with Jeremy Sisto Jesus. I don't know. I like that thought. So when you have the voice of God getting doused with a fire extinguisher because, you know, flames and burning bush and all that, and he's all like, Sweet Jesus, do you have to use the whole can? What are you? I'm pissed off is what I am. Just cracks me up. And Kevin Smith in this movie did what I think Kevin Smith was trying to do in the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which is have your lowbrow humor with Jay and Silent Bob. But also on the flip side, have those really heartfelt character moments in here. In my review of the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, I talked about how he has a couple of feet in a couple different generations and hands in different pots. And he's trying to go with different tones that just don't work. But it's like everything that was a critique there he did make work in Dogma. Kevin Smith has the stoner humor in this movie that he's known for, but you don't have to be stoned in order to enjoy it. It has that for teenage stoners who wanna watch Dogma and just enjoy it for that. But then he has deeper philosophical ideologies and emotional moments in this movie that resonate with you as you get older. It's a movie that can span generations. I thought it was really clever the way he brought religion into it. But even philosophically speaking, I like when Chris Rock in this movie plays the 13th apostle who was taken out of the Bible. I like how he talks about the problem of the factioning of religions because you have all these religions being like no no we're the only like the other ones are they're fine but we're the correct one and that's not really what god would want i enjoy that perspective it makes everyone just kind of self-reflect and be like yeah maybe maybe they're all flawed right and also the jay and silent bob element worked very well in this movie not only the fact that you have good versus evil heaven and hell and then in the middle of it as an apostle as someone who's on the pilgrimage of good you have jay this loud mouth foul mouth stoner hedonist, but he's on the good guy's side. Clearly he's smoking the devil's lettuce. He must be on the bad side of things. But no, like Jay's just, he's human. And Jay cracks me up so much in Dogma as opposed to the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, partly because I think his dialogue is better in here and less pathetic because he's a person this age doing it. 
not that age doing it? I mean, at a point you're like, well, I'm not like that, but I'm laughing at the fact that you are, and one day you'll learn. Hey, he's in his 20s, you're supposed to be young and stupid in your 20s, and then when that character's 40-something, and it's, it's time to hang it up. Jay's just a character who's supposed to be that age in that age range. And then when that character grows up, you just retire him. So Jay works in this movie as he worked back then in his optimal age range. But really for me, the point of the movie, the big scene stealers, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. As Bartleby and Loki, I love the dynamic of the two. I love the story that they're just these two angels who were thrown out of heaven. They have found a loophole to get back into heaven. By doing that, they're gonna unmake all of existence, but they don't know that. They don't know the consequences of their actions. They're just trying to go home. They're not trying to be dicks. And although I like the pair, Ben Affleck, I gotta give props. Bartleby is an amazing role for Ben Affleck. I mean, yeah, logistically, he's done roles in which he was better in them, sure. Doesn't change the fact that when I think of, oh, a great role that Ben Affleck played, Bartleby comes to my mind. And his rant that he has in that parking garage with Loki, you just feel the pent up pain and anger that he has against his father and creator who just who threw him out of his house. Where was his infinite fucking patience then? It's not right, it's not fair. Affleck was bringing it in this movie. He didn't have to, it's a stoner comedy, but it wasn't treated like one. Or at least it wasn't treated like that's all the movie was. There's more going on in Dogma. Absolutely. And it's one of those cases like, I'm not a religious person, grew up a religious person, but not a religious person in this phase of my life. But I understand why people are religious. But I generally appreciate the approach dogma takes when it comes to religion. I'll tell you what I mean. It does poke at religion. It puts the multi-billion dollar industry known as religion in the crosshair, sure. But it does it in the name of challenging a power structure. It raises the question that maybe these structures are flawed structures made by flawed people. And maybe the little dogmatic rules they've come up with to keep that power structure in play, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe if there's a God, God wouldn't give a shit about any of that. I always got the feeling that the movie Dogma put religion in the crosshairs, but not the religious. The movie seems to leave the people out of it and leave people to believe in a God if they need to or want to believe in a God. At most it's saying, yeah, belief in God is fine, but if, maybe if you trim some of the fat. I just appreciate the fact that the movie doesn't go out of its way to insult people who might believe in a higher power. In the end, Dogma was a great surprise. <laughs> I turned it on, I was like, oh God, please be good. Please still be good. And I watched it and it was still good. It was great even. I would argue, I really liked Dogma back in the day. I appreciated it more now. It's a movie that aged very well for me. It's a movie that was made by Kevin Smith from a place of passion. In the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, there's a monologue at the end of the movie or near the end of the movie Movie where you feel like Kevin Smith's basically telling his perspective and I thought it was very sweet it was it was a great monologue for sure the monologue is like when you have kids you're no longer the star of the show you're the stage and you basically do what you do so your kids can have the best shot possible. In that, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, I feel like he made so his daughter can have a spotlight shown on her. And I totally get that. He's, he's being a good dad about it. I respect it, but when he made movies that came from his place of passion to tell his story, that's still when he made his best work. That's how art is, and that's what dogma is to me. It's, it's absolutely, it's a piece of Kevin Smith art. And I will say dogma is definitely worth watching, definitely worth buying on Blu-ray. Which is funny, because I guess it's really hard to find. It doesn't exist on any streaming platforms, and the hard copies, I guess you can find a DVD in a used bin, or the Blu-ray in a used bin. If you find the Blu-ray of Dogma, buy it. Because it goes for like a hundred bucks online. It's something to do with the Weinstein Company, anyhow. I hope it gets re-released. All right, so Dogma, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Have you seen it recently? Does it hold up? Is it better now than you remember it before? Does it not hold up? Whatever you think of Dogma, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. Whether it's Linda, F whether it's our lead Linda, F whether it's the lead Linda F Fiorentino, whether it's the lead Linda Fiorentino, yeah, I'm editing right there. I, for some reason, I can't jump into a sentence after saying the name. Like it locks my brain up.